So we are specifically working with 6x9 inch sketchbooks right now. Um, now when it comes to the board, you're going to want to measure a half inch around the outside. I like to just trace the board first, hopefully your board is square, um, or else it might be an issue. But first, go ahead and trace it and then use a ruler to measure out in two different spots a half inch out. Uh, the reason we do that is you can't trust yourself with just one spot. That way it makes you a, a kind of a accountable for what you're doing. Um, and then just this is boring. All right, just repeat it all the way around. Um, draw some darker lines to make it easier to see. Make sure you're doing this on the back of your nice cover paper. That's very important. All right, so get yourself a nice X-Acto knife. Make sure you are holding the ruler with your non-dominant hand down uh, on a cutting mat. So you are going to be cutting off that excess to that half inch that you measured earlier, right? So, speed up time. All right, this is just a little cheat I do with a see-through ruler and a rotor cutter. You ask me about it. All right, so um, with glue, I use pretty simple things. Um, these are printmaking brayers. As long as you wash them, it's fine. I use Elmer's School Glue. Uh, the way I few, it's uh, non-toxic, kind of made so kids can eat it. I imagine I will probably hear some flack about that on the internet because y'all love that PVA glue. I don't care. I made books 10 years ago and they, they look fine, so. I know I probably should care a little bit more about how long these last, but whatever. So roll yourself out a nice D, like how you treat the ink for printmaking, and then roll it onto the board. It's important to roll the board. And you can see what I'm doing right now, is I'm moving the board out of the way. Use as much newspaper as you need to. I'm making sure that there's no glue behind it. Because if you get glue on your paper, it's gonna ruin your board. Um, but you know, we got plenty of newspaper, so just do whatever you want. Those trees are already dead. I don't know how necessary it is to smack it, but smack it. So make sure to get the air bubbles and creases out, okay? And so we're using a bone folder to kind of crease the edge there, you know? So that'll make it easier to fold over later. Because that's the goal here is to fold it all together. Now we're gonna cut the corners off to make it when we fold and glue it together. A little bit easier. I guess so. <coughs> Coughing right into the mic, that's what everybody wants. Yeah, so you just cut it off. I mean, you could probably measure this. I don't, it's fine. If you're really particular earlier on, you can be sloppy now. All right, so now that we got that, we're gonna roll glue only onto one side of the brayer. So you see, uh, so once you got that done, you're gonna roll it onto the paper just on that side. Get it nice and thin. It can be a little thick. It's probably gonna be a little thick. Uh, it's okay. So what I do now is I'm folding it, using its own weight against it to keep it taut, and then glue over. And then again, I don't know if the punching's necessary, but it makes me feel good. No, no, it's over. Mazel. Now I'm just going to repeat that on all the other sides. I like to do opposite sides first. So if I do the long edge on one, I do the long edge on the other. I don't know if that necessarily makes a difference, but... Messed up a little bit right there, but... Yeah. All right, so make sure you got a nice clean area again. This part's a little particular. You're gonna be gluing the paper and then putting the paper on the board. The reason we're not doing that, see that little bit of difference? A little bit of space? It's really important that you don't glue the board because you're not gonna hit it with all the paper. So, nice clean area, and then... There you go. Um, you have a little bit of movement time with this glue. That's really important. You have a little bit, but don't mess it up. Make sure to put your initials on the corner and check out my hair. 
Um, so that way we know whose is whose. Get some bubbles, get them out. You can go put it under a weight. That's why I keep those art and focus books around. Now for drilling, um, you take the paper from the last video with the holes punctured through it, and you're going to line it up about a quarter to a half inch from the edge. Um, we use clamps to hold everything down on an old board. Go ahead and just, you could again probably measure this, but eyeball's just fine. Uh, put the paper down with the holes, so that way you can see it, and just kind of outline where those holes are. So that way you'll have a pretty good facsimile of what's on the inside of the book. There's a chance your boards may not match. Um, that happens from time to time, human error. For the most part, no one's gonna, unless it's egregious, like a full inch in separation, uh, no one's gonna notice in your finished sketchbook, so. All right, so stack them together, make sure it's like a sandwich, you got the insides facing each other. It's really important, um, so that way the holes match. But sometimes you're not perfect with your symmetry of the holes, right? This will ensure that everything will match up. So always sandwich them together. This is my uh, drill, it's a hand drill. Uh, make sure when you're using a hand drill, you go straight in and straight out. Never go at an angle. That's how all my drill bits break, and I don't like that. Um, always straight in and straight out, okay? Straight in, straight out. Make sure whenever you're drilling, you're on some sort of board like this. I got the whiteboard behind it. If you don't, it won't like work. Well, I mean, it'll work, but it'll ruin my drill bit on my nice tables. So, or I guess if you're doing this at home, your nice tables. I don't know where you're doing this. Uh, yeah, just drill, drill, drill. 